Miss Universe Judd says transgender contestant led to bankruptcy. Uh, Emily Austin attributed to pageant bankruptcy to outrage over transgender contestant, contestant stating, I think the outrage about a trans woman coming to Miss Universe and preaching, bring the power back to women, couldn't be more of an oxymoron. She expressed her belief that allowing transgender women to participate was both socially and morally wrong, adding people are starting to catch on to that. Austin highlighted the financial issues faced by the company under the ownership of Thai media mogul and trans woman and can't pronounce the last name, who yeah. purchased the rights to Miss Universe, Miss USA, and Miss Teen in 2022 for $20 million. You mentioned the company's failure to fulfill a $20 million loan debt. Anyways, we know the story here. Uh, give us a little bit of back- background with the story there and why you think this uh, brand called Miss Universe, 72-year-old brand, is getting destroyed by this person here. I mean, growing up, I loved Miss Universe. Yeah. For God's sake, when I was not even 18, I ran for Miss New York. I-, I thought it was the coolest thing ever because Miss Universe should be an example of what-, what a woman should be to the world, like the prime example of a woman. And when I say woman, I mean a biological one. And everyone's been calling me transphobic and trans every nasty word you can possibly be called. But it's quite simple, my theory. And, and if you actually listen with your ears, you'll likely agree. I don't care what you identify as. You want to identify as a cat? So be it. I think you're a weirdo, but it's not my problem. But now you're crossing a boundary where you are threatening women's empowerment, which is what Miss Universe is preaching. And you are saying this person who grew up a man never knew what a period cramp felt like, never knew what, you know, like all the awkward puberty things and and awkward things that women have to deal with. Okay, you don't know what that feels like the same way. I don't know what it's like to be like a man truly biologically. But the fact that you want to identify now halfway through your life or whatever point and say, I deserve this more than a Mm -hmm. biological woman. Now you're berating woman. And that's not fair. Same thing in sports. You know, uh, in 2012, a a video surfaced of Serena Williams saying, oh, if I played X, Y, Z, she was speaking about a male athlete. He would destroy me five minutes, six. And he wasn't even the greatest. No, she's the greatest. He was he was a top 10 guy. But yeah, you're right. But she's number one without a doubt. You know, biologically, I'm sorry, we are not the same. And you can identify as whatever you want, but just stop pretending it's the the same because it's not and that's what i keep saying to Ms. universe it's not the same the year i was a judge there were no trans contestants i would not have been okay with that that was 2022 2023 yeah. there was there two was contestants out of i believe 80 three. women or three uh, maybe they one snuck one in at the end but yeah but emily here's my question though what how how is this small minority group just so protected and so they basically just do whatever they want if you and if you criticize them at all you can't you can't say anything against them not even you can't even be funny you can't even crack jokes Everybody turns on you and you get canceled. I mean, I think that's our fault. Not like us in this room, yeah. but it's yeah. our fault because we're allowing it. Everyone's like, you're never going to make it because you're you're everyone calls me Miss Conservative. Nobody even knows my political values, which is funny. Um, you're against trans. You're against gays. No. First of all, I make jokes about everyone. I make Jew jokes. I'll make like every joke to every community because it's a joke. So relax. But the, sen- the second we start censoring ourselves because of the response, you're enabling them to cancel you. Be uncancelable and you won't get canceled. I know it's probably easier said than done, but why are we silencing ourselves? Like, look at Chris D'Elia, comedian, right? Yeah. He was canceled so many times, but he's killing it on Netflix, on world tours. Like, he didn't let himself get canceled. Dave Portnoy, every week someone's trying to cancel him. Doesn't let it happen. So why are we the ones censoring our own free speech in the best country in the world when we have it? Just don't. It's really well, that simple. A lot of people are wearing uh, being canceled as a badge of honor these days. It's like, <laughs> uh, you know, once, twice, you, you tried. But you said that it's all our fault for sort of being complicit in this. I would argue that it's women's fault. Hear Why me out. I don't know a lot of men, at least in those circles that I'm in, and it's not like I'm in, I'm in the left, I'm in the right, I'm everywhere. I'm doing, I don't know a lot of men that are like, yeah, women should, men can totally compete in this. I know a lot of women that don't speak out about this, and they'll do, because I've interviewed countless amounts of women on this on my other show and the women at least off camera would agree yeah i don't really like this but on camera they're like yeah i don't really want to talk about it so i think it's incumbent on women like what you're doing to stand up and saying no i don't want you in my pageant right mm-hmm. because when men say it we will sound misogynistic or chauvinist toxic or, yeah or toxic but they're taking over your contest. They're taking over your sports. Well, so I I'll think it's important that women is. speak out more. I agree with you 100%. And when it comes to Miss Universe, people were challenging me hard on it because they were saying this is a pageant about looks. Now, I thought so as well until I became a judge. 
once I became a judge, I really tried to listen to the interviews and be like, who has a story that's so inspiring that I want the world to hear? Mm -hmm. And that's where I realized, okay, this is not about looks. Because let's be real, the woman who wins is not the prettiest woman every year at all. Okay, if it was the prettiest woman, it would have been Miss Columbia in my year. She was by far the most beautiful I've every seen. Every year, by the way. Every year, yeah, Miss no, Columbia is yeah. so hot. Gorgeous. And with that being said, you know, with sports and, and Miss Universe, I even think they're incomparable. It's the same issue. It's a common denominator. But sports is just biologically you're going to be humiliated if if you play a transgender woman, a.k.a. a biological man. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Miss Universe, like Varney argued on Fox, no, it's about looks. No, it's not. It's, it's never been about looks. It's always the interview. So... You know, you need a true feminism story, not like well. Let's be clear. Here. Looks as well. is a if it's not number one, no. it's number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that yeah. the winner, by the way? Is no, the, the winner was actually that a girl was from Columbia. No, no, no. That, that was twenty twenty two, and twenty twenty three was actually a girl from Nicaragua. You know, she's pretty shocker, Adam, Adam shocker alert, her. friend of a friend, Shanice yeah. from um, Nicaragua. Classy, uh, sexy, smart. And, she crushed it. And you yeah. know what? No, no, nobody's saying it. We mentioned on the sh on the show, Em. It's why don't the trans community Rob, start your, loud. Yeah, start your own. Oh, I'm always loud. Start your own trans universe, trans league, trans sports, trans UFC, trans swimming. Do your own thing. Why are you yeah. guys trying to infiltrate everybody else's shit? Have one create. Have a blue ocean. Go create your own shit. And they're women, Vinny. You know? They're women. No, they're no, no, men. That, no, they're no, men. That's oh, the logical. Men. Oh, they're, 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 they're playing fantasy. Women. Vinny, that's the logical end argument. So there's there's truth in what you say, but that's the logical end argument. The front end is what is what gets missed in this. It is a leftist, socialist, Marxist agenda. Find a victim and leverage it. And... If there is no victim, you have to create a victim. Yeah. And if you take a look at the opportunistic rotation of how leftists have taken victims mm -hmm. and groups and leverage for point. what they want, yeah. what they want to do is is drop the walls and undermine the traditions yeah. and the stability of the country. That's the leftist agenda. They don't care about about trans. So let's go take a look. You go back and look at it. George Floyd, it was overblown. He had BL, the, the whole... Um, the part that was over, a guy died. A guy died with the cop right there that day, and there was a court case and everything that went with it. But all the BLM stuff was was sort of one side of the reaction was overblown because it was misinterpreting analysis. On the other side, everybody says, why is the media jumping on this? Let's focus on that. The media was jumping on it because there's the victim. There's the leverage. There's the point. Marxist social leftist agenda, you have to find a victim and leverage it. And but right these now, communities don't see that they're being a pawn in a bigger agenda. Exactly. How do you not see it? They think it's my turn in the spotlight. It's not your turn in the spotlight. You're being used. As a victim, which is not a great pain. How is that enablement? You're it's down. Not. You're terrible. They, they've done this You're to you. Oppressed. Yeah. You're oppressed. You're oppressed. Yeah. So they destroy your personhood. They destroy your value. You can't do anything yourself. You need us to be working for you. Wait a minute. Be careful what they're working on. They're not really working for you. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.